still building stuff, still breaking stuff, but I am making progress. I'm finally putting the front body panel on and I'm fixing all the electrical problems that stopped this project from moving forward so I can actually play this guitar. Hello, my name is Chad, at Metalhead Maker on most socials. And to very quickly recap, I am building a fully 3D printed guitar. Yes, that includes the neck, and it also has a bunch of electronics in it that you don't typically see in a guitar. A lot of people have been asking me when I'm gonna be able to actually play this guitar. How about right now? <laughs> Oh no, did I lose sound? So if you've been following purely because you wanna find out if you can fully 3D print a guitar, including the neck and have it just play like a normal guitar, there's your answer. It was actually just some scrap footage that I pulled out from when I was doing some testing. Anyway. To make this front body panel, I've got a lot of 3D printing to do. And by that, I mean I need to waste a metric ton of filament before I finally get it right. And just to be clear on what I'm actually printing here, the body is split into two main sections. You've seen this before. This is the underside. It carries most of the electronics and the pickup, basically all the hardware for the guitar. The top part, which you haven't seen yet, is what is going to hold all of the LEDs on the front of the body. It's gonna go over the top, make it look nice and pretty, and really just give it a design. Kind of like with the bottom part, there isn't so much structural integrity needed here because all of the guts of the guitar are going through the core. Still, it's sturdy enough that it's not gonna feel like it's flexing or anything. A point of contention for 3D printing is that you constantly have to deal with layer lines and the remnants of 3D printed supports. Knowing that this has a bunch of flat surfaces that are gonna have to be sanded to a complete mirror finish, I split up the model so I can have all those flat surfaces print completely flat on the bed of the 3D printer. That's definitely gonna give me a better finish in the end, but it's also gonna require that I do a bunch of sanding and gluing. In fact, uh, I'll just, here, just watch. Ah, dang it. I super glued my finger to the guitar for like, for real, for real. <laughs> it was a solid glue job. Did you do it when we were stuck together that one time? Yeah. Was it alcohol or something? Acetone. Or you could just be stuck to the guitar. I mean, right now I am. I would be lovely if you could so grab me some acetone or something. What, like you've never glued your fingers to a guitar? Pfft. Some of the stuff really wasn't quite fitting the way that I needed it to, so I needed to reprint a section of the bottom panel. Yeah, that means that I had to take the entire guitar apart and then break apart the back panel, replace that section, and then reassemble everything. That in itself is not a big deal, but this is not built to be disassembled. At least the panels aren't once you glue it and screw it. Electronics are another thing that don't really like to be disturbed. I'm trying to be careful, but I am seeing some signs of the wire starting to get brittle. Regardless, I got that section replaced and everything back together and now I get to go deal with a bunch of problems with the fretboard. Just looking at that you can tell that even if everything works right now, there's so much imperfection because it's all done by hand. It's quite possible that just flex or wear is gonna cause one of those connections to either break or maybe even short circuit. But for now, I'm sticking with it for the sake of progress. On that note, I need to do something about these neck wires. See, they've got a metal mesh shielding on them and then they're also really crammed into the neck. So it's a short circuit hazard and it's also really messy. So I don't really trust the structural integrity of it either. Also, when I start EMI testing, I wanna have a baseline where I don't have any any EMI rejection on there and then slowly start adding layers so I can tell what's really causing improvements or maybe even causing problems. With the neck and the fretboard buttoned up, I can finally kind of smush everything together and check for any kind of problems with fitment. And aside from the awkward placement of the fretboard wire, everything kind of just works. So yay. The same cannot be said about the control panel because I broke the screen, but Actually, it wasn't a bad thing because I learned that the screen that I chose was a variant of the screen that I wanted that did not play nicely with the microcontrollers that I used. So I guess fate was trying to tell me that I need to go shopping at AliExpress again. <laughs> the new version, yes, it's a little bit bigger, which is always a plus, but it has a CS pin, which is basically addressing pin, which for some reason, some microcontrollers really don't like if you don't have that. And giving my proclivity for breaking stuff, I bought four. Those screens just came in today, so I haven't had a chance to play with them yet. 
but in the meantime, I've been working on the LEDs for the body. I talked about in the past how tedious these panels were to get wired up, but I did finally get them both done, and I'm happy to report that I only burned out about 10 LEDs in the process. See, I can usually chalk up mistakes that I make to like manufacturing inefficiencies or just some kind of freak situation, but in this case, I just did the old switcheroo on the positive and negative. It happens. You know what? Hold on a second. That does not look healthy. You can mistake that color for being normal, but if you look at every one of the other pixels in the batch, they're all white. Anyway, I finally got it right, and now it's a Christmas tree. Nice. This might seem like kind of a small update, but a lot of the stuff that I'm showing here is some of the most tedious but really important parts of the project that just aren't very photogenic, if that makes sense. Famous last words, but I don't see why I couldn't have this fully assembled and somewhat functional by the next video, but we'll just have to wait and see what kind of speed bumps I hit from here then. If you're digging this project so far, leave the video a like, and if you've got any questions or you just want to shoot the breeze, drop a comment below, and I will be back soon for another update.